Welcome to another episode of Metal Mastermind, and today we are going to talk about how we can make metal music theory help make more metal music. So I love this idea because when we are trying to create our riffs, sometimes we want to spice it up just a little bit, and we are always wondering, you know, how can we find new ways to implement new different types of chords or changes in a progression in order to make something go from A to Z, right? This is a big, big issue that we have as songwriters and musicians where we're always figuring out what is the best way. Now, in some of these instances, I like to go ahead and think about where is my starting key, which we've talked about in another episode of how to find your key, which is the tonic and figuring out, okay, where can I go from this key to help develop it into something more interesting? Now, Jason, he's going to be playing a riff for us, and I want you to take a listen, because Jason does something very interesting here. After listening to that riff, did you hear that there was a little bit of a different color change in some of those notes? Because he was playing an E minor, right? That is what we call a flat two. And that is also known as a Neapolitan chord. Mm, I like that ice cream flavor now that I think about it. Anyway, <laughs> that Neapolitan chord, it's very actually, it comes from the world of jazz. And jazz, they like to use these kinds of colors because what it does is it, it takes something that's outside of the element of this key and fills it with a different type of flavor. Now that flat two is a major chord, and so Jason, he's executing that as a power chord. So there's a little bit of ambiguity as to, is it a major, is it a minor? But it kind of fits, right? It makes it feel a little bit more dissonant, but at the same time, it has a nice resolution to it. You can use a flat two to then continue into something like a four and five. It's almost like a way of using a transitionary chord to get to the next step. I love that. So. Here's what I also like what Jason did. In the end, when he goes to the other chord, if you listen to that chord, that chord feels like it's not even in the key at all, but yet there's still some kind of relation to it. Let's go to the circle of fifths for a second. And you see D minor, you see how D minor has this one flat and it's a B flat. Now, do you also see that D minor is two spaces away from E minor? So if you look at that inner circle, you can see that you have E, A, then D. That means that as you are closer or farther apart, right, the closer you get to the home key, the more consonant your transitory chords are going to feel. So if we go further away, that means it's going to feel more dissonant. And if we go just like a step further than the most consonant one, like you see here from E instead of E to A, but we have E to D minor, it's enough of a shock to feel like there is a surprise modulation happening a chord that we didn't expect, that doesn't necessarily fall in the spectrum of the original key, but it's close enough that it's enough for us to use as a way to transition our chords into something a little bit more fresh, a little bit more dissonant in that transitory phase, but it can resolve on the other side in a positive way. So I want you to think about that. These are just some ideas that you can use in order to use music theory to help bolster 
your ideas for songwriting. Guys, if this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the Metal Mastermind YouTube channel. And if you're ready to take that next step into getting deeper into music theory and you enjoy the way Ken presents music theory here, well, check out our course called Metal Music Theory on MetalMastermind.com. In fact, there's a link to the course in the YouTube description of this video. So check that out. We'll see you on the next video. And as always, create your own sound.